Imagine yourself sitting in a car, driving in a beautiful, but a badly lit freeway, just after the sunset, so it's getting dark. But it's beautiful, you're in your own thoughts, you're super relaxed, everything is fine, you played a nice round with your friends, everything is cool. And then you see a moose, a moose that's standing right in front of you, and you're about to crash that moose. What is the intuition at this point? Well, you're probably, and I suggest you do, you slam the brakes. Take the gas pedal off and slam the brakes as hard as you can. And probably you will also push your back, your ass to the seat. You are not braking like this. Ooh, I, I have to see the moose a little closer. You don't want to see the moose closer. You're pushing back and braking at the same time. This is how you should initiate the throw. What do you do after that? Well, you do this. This is what you do with the arm. But the most important part, really, is that you slam the brakes with your front leg and then you don't want to reach out to the moose you want to stay as far back from the moose so that you actually initiate the throw from the hips and not with the neck and shoulders. This very far-fetched analogy is one way to explain the throw. I have been telling this same thing over and over again with different analogies and crashing the moose <laughs> or avoiding the moose it's just one stupid way to make you understand the legwork. So the throwing motion starts with the pretty much same motion as you would do when you slam the brakes and you push your back to the seat. Everything is cool, we're relaxed, driving, fun, all good. And then coil and slam the brakes like this. You really need to slam the brakes. This motion here makes my hip turn like this. The momentum I have gathered from the back leg going forward like this needs to go somewhere and it goes forward while my leg, my front leg stops the momentum. So this happens. The more you have momentum, the more you need to push back because you don't want to hit the moose with your neck, with the shoulders, with your head. You want to stay as far away from the moose as possible. So this is why you need to go forward and backwards at the same time. You start doing like this. This is me exaggerating. You are not doing it exactly like this, but this is how it feels you should do. What to do with the arm? Well, it's quite easy after that. With the arm, you do this. This is why people talk about starting the lawnmower or pulling, because you have to feel like you are pulling that way. It's not a pull, but it's more of a curl. You curl the disc here and because you are slamming the brakes like this, you will rotate at the same time. That's why you might feel like pulling the disc in without rotating. But because you have the momentum going forward and your front leg stopping the momentum, you will rotate open. And that's why you don't want to rotate intentionally with your upper body because if you do that intentionally you will over rotate causing you to late release people who force the rotation end up looking like this when you need to look like this you need to release the disc here not here so that's why i am strongly against rotating intentionally i used to advocate for the rotation now I'm against it because I know better. So to recap, slam the 
brakes as hard as you can with the front leg and at the same time curl the disc in and let the momentum take away from there. If you keep your arm relaxed, it will open the right moment. If you stiffen up, it won't do that. And if you rotate like this, you will release late. So don't hit the moose, hit the brakes. And then the arm does this. Good luck, remember to follow, remember to share, do everything you want. If you like this video, if you didn't like this video, well, too bad. I will make a better one next time, guaranteed.